The Second World War had just ended, the Korean War had just started, and relations with the Soviet Union were not looking good. Today we're talking about the history of air raid sirens. In the early 1950s, Canada realized the very real threat of nuclear war with the Soviet Union. Prime Minister Louis Saint Laurent commissioned the procurement of 200 air raid sirens to be dispersed across the country, a national defense warning system to warn Canadians of impending attack. But they ended up ordering these little guys, one to two horsepower sirens that would be perched upon telephone poles, which uh, didn't exactly cut it. But first, let's back up. If Canada had been attacked, it was believed the large eastern cities would be first, or possibly Vancouver. They would have targeted heavily populated areas as well as places of industry. Hamilton, for example, a main producer of steel. But these small sirens were supposed to do... Well, they were supposed to warn us to leave town or get in a bunker. The government's policy was also that Canadians were all meant to personally take up arms and fight with whatever they could get their hands on. Now, back to these small sirens sprinkled across the country. Toronto by 1952 had received 35 sirens. The city believed they needed at least 81. New York City at the time had 526 larger ones to put it in perspective. So Toronto protested and refused to put them up until 1956 because Hurricane Hazel came along in 1954, which led the city to take safety a little more seriously. By the 1960s, Canada realized they needed larger sirens, like this one. So somewhere between 1,500 and 1,700 were dispersed across the country. There's no confirmed tally for Toronto, but a couple still remain. After the fall of the Soviet Union and a detente, Canada chose to decommission their national siren program, dismantling or simply unplugging most sirens. By 1994, 1,500 had been shut down. Arguably the most notable one in Toronto is right here, just north of Trinity Bellwoods Park, disconnected. Have you seen any? Now most were scrapped or picked up by collectors or put in people's garages, but there are still a whole bunch all across Canada and we don't really know how many or where. Now let me briefly digress. If you are interested in Toronto history, please make sure to like this video, comment underneath, share it, and as always, tell all your friends. Thank you. <laughs>